Today, we're going to talk about a moment in buffet history where something was invented that changed buffets forever, and that is the sneeze guard. Hachoo! <laughs> And it was actually invented by a germaphobe, and they invented the glass barrier in 1959. It was for one of the original buffet concepts, which is a, what was it? I forget the name, but it was based on the Swedish concept of smorgasbord, which is, I guess smorgasbord means like a large spread of food, like for family style. He didn't like people looking down at the food and touching it right and sneezing and smelling it because i think there's a tendency for people to want to do that sometimes when you smell something if you change the direction of the air all of a sudden something could fall out of your nose he didn't want that happening things can fall out of your nose and that is terrifying (laughs) i'm terrified right now thinking of that something falling out of someone's nose into my food Yeah, it's pretty frightening. Either a hair or a booger. Yeah, or a a booger with a hair in it. But I thought it was interesting. I read that article that was um, written actually by the Smithsonian in 2013. And it talked all about this guy's, you know, restaurant concepts. Um, But I thought it was interesting that they said there was only a 100 patents in 2013 related to in the food service industry that were related kind of like this sort of product the sneeze guard 100 patents which uh is pretty small compared to the overall amount of patents which is like eight this said there was like eight million if i remember correctly that was interesting so does that mean we don't know how to innovate in food service well i guess we don't in the food services so i guess there's space for innovative people to come up with ideas because not a lot of that is being done. So do you have any ideas that you would like to give away for free that you never felt like patenting yourself, but maybe one of our viewers would like to go to the trouble of trying to patent the idea themselves and then they can just, you know, they won't pay you for the idea they can just give you a patent on the back. <laughs> yeah, send us your ideas. Aaron and I will review them, no cost. And um, we, will, we will take the ideas that we want and we will throw all the other ones back. Yeah, the guy had a fear of uh, germs and he developed this for his restaurants and then, you know, smart enough to patent the product. The patent ran out. It was a 14 year patent. I'm going to put a link to the article in the description of this video, but I just want to take a moment and look at this buffet setup that you have behind you from the late fifties. It's quite elegant. And one thing that I noticed was how the carver is dressed and he's wearing a very professional looking chef's hat. He's wearing a bow tie. Nowadays, you don't see many food service people dress like this anymore. It's gotten real casual. I don't know if you wore a bow tie, the tendency when you went up to get your, your slice of beef is you wouldn't, you, you would ask them for the slice, like, what do you want from? And then you would also want to punch him in the face because he's wearing a bow tie. It wasn't like that 50 years ago. You don't think he got punched in the face for wearing a bow tie? No, but I think nowadays that might happen. Yeah, but I agree. You can see the see the 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 ornateness of that sneeze guard. You can kind of see the the metal support frame. This sort of design, and you can see the buffet is wood grain. I mean, there is a lot of attention to not only the functional aspect of this thing, but how beautiful it would look. And I think that that has changed somewhat. A lot of buffets now are much more contemporary looking. Some of them are very clean, stainless. This kind of, this looks warm. It's a warm looking buffet. I'm wondering what sort of innovations like the sneeze guard are going to come out of all this stuff that we've been through. I have seen some, some new products already that have hit the market to address this the germs that are 
all over the place now that we don't want to get we don't want to get the germs on us. But what I do notice is there's very few of these products are patented. Prior to the pandemic, uh, I was a, a uh, and I still am, I'm still a plate salesman, but with restaurants being closed, uh, there's they're not breaking plates and, you know, there's not as many plates, there's not as much plate activity in the market right now. But I have always been, uh, for many years, throughout my life, I took a little break, a, a tabletop specialist. So I would be the person, see that table setting over there on the table with the napkins? I would be the, I would, I was a salesman and I would come up with ideas and concepts, products for that tabletop, glasses, silverware, plates, everything to serve food. So I continue to do that now, but we're waiting for the pandemic to end. Basically, you can see this if you can see this little bowl. This is a nice little bowl. You may serve a side dish in or an appetizer. Well, people, you know, when it goes out to the dining room now, it's open. There's right. Mm -hmm. People don't in your face. You're carrying it through. Maybe you have a mask on, but the germs are in the air. So what we did, we came up with a flexible lid. Flexible slides right over here it's hard to do with one hand on the camera and i'm very nervous i'm sure it works well when you're not thinking about it so much there you go so now it's covered you can sneeze on that and it'll never get contaminated correct if you did sneeze if you had a mask on and some of the sneeze got through the mask like a really really powerful sneeze and the mask was strapped to your face but the air from the sneeze pulled the mask, pushed it out from your face, like the elastic stretched, pulled your ears forward. So the sneeze got out like through the tops of the mask and the sides, this extra security, which we've, we've come up with. This is an innovation. This is a product that didn't really exist or wasn't needed. So now this is, this is the world that we live in. Here's another one. The lid, right? This is the road to buffets coming back. Yeah, you could picture this at a at a buffet. Let's say that buff these were stacked up for customers to come and grab. Maybe next time we can talk about some buffets that are using these products and have reopened and we can talk about what buffets look like now. I think that'd be great. Remember, the buffet is a part of Americana. You read the article from the Smithsonian. It's pretty interesting. I, I enjoyed it. I'll put a link in the description of the video. Read it and let us know what you think in the comments. If you have ideas for new products, send them to us. We will tell you whether or not they're good. We may not tell you the truth. If it's really good, we'll probably say it's not good. And you'll be like, oh, darn. We'll be like, yeah, we'll, we'll keep it for you. And then Aaron and I will, will become wealthy with your idea that you chose not to patent because you're lazy. Ha! There's a lot of lazy people out there. Patents aren't that hard. You don't even really need a patent. A trademark will do. Thanks for watching everyone. Oh, sorry. I said too much. Thanks. <laughs>